him because every single time you try to challenge him, if you fail once, then all of a sudden it starts spiraling out of control. But it seems like Secret are content to challenge an alchemist. Like, why pick a Crystal Maiden unless you really want Arcane Aura? You really want to be challenging this alchemist in the jungle constantly. I mean, I think it's a combination of both. You want to challenge him while both having this sort of carry of your own that can uh, can scale with the alchemist, or is you know generating generating all that net worth, hectoring it up in the jungle. You know, hectoring just, it up. just getting super <laughs> super farmed. Um, and I, yeah, so I mean, I think the, the Crystal Maidens, like you said, it suits that quite well. You have this extra mana, you can run in Tiny's got more avalanches, more tree uh, tree grabs. Midwind's been doing this build where he maxes the E, so you can take the towers pretty early. I think it actually... Um, oh, so you're back to it's pretty sick. mid lane Tiny then? And no, I think it's certainly mid. I mean, now that okay. the winner just show up, I think it's, it's most likely a four win ranger um, with the mid Tiny, because I mean, he'll max this tree and your tower is just going to start dying pretty early. You're going to lose this mid lane tower. Um, and it's kind of hard to stop because it's very casual, you know, it's not like this this uh, organized push where a bunch of heroes come to your lane. It's like you look away for a second and suddenly Tiny's hit your tower four times and it lost, you know, 400 HP. Yeah, and and you have to bring like two or three heroes to stop it. And you don't want to do that, like you said, to, to stop this casual push if he's investing virtually no resources. Yeah, so I think it's, it's not something we've seen that often. It's sort of been a more recent trend where people are started ma starting maxing the, the tree grab. Um, so it it may potentially you know give this alchemist uh, some problems when he starts losing towers you know very very early. Usually when you see these first pick cores, they're really versatile in how they can play the game. And I see tinies go for the max avalanche toss still if they're against squishy cores. But when they're against these centaur alchemist type heroes, they just go for the max tree grab, and that serves as a way to just like I, I can't kill you right now. I'll just kill all your buildings first, and then get enough gold and net worth and levels to bring you down later. The ag scepters are super broken. So <laughs> any way you get to the ag with the echo saber. <laughs> You'll take it. Your Ag Scepter with Heavenly Grace. This man's gonna be doing so much damage with that tree volley. And Beach Gaming gonna round it out with a Razor. So which one's mid? Is it gonna be the Alchemist or the Razor? I think it'll. I think it'll most likely be the uh, the Razor. I think Alchemist. If they put the Alchemist mid, could have a rough time against the Tiny. It's much easier to rotate. I think whatever the Alchemist is centered around mid. I think Paparazzi just is also. Um, all the times I've seen this team pick the hero has been the, the one to play the, the Alchemist. I mean, I think they're expecting this Tiny to be mid. Um, so they picked the Razor, which is quite nice because it's not like this Tiny's going to be able to have a free game to run around to beat down these towers super early if he's got, you know, this sort of immovable object in his path, sucking all his damage. You know, he's not going to kill these towers as fast. I think it's a, a pretty good, like, defensive response against secrets, you know. We're sneaking into your jungle, this Razor's, you know, I'll, no, I will stand in your path. Yeah. Static Link also not affected by status resistance, and it's also really good against the idea of Tiny and Omni, right? They want to play up in your face, and no better way, you can't kill them fast I mean, than just make them do nothing. Until he gets the Agate the Scepter, then he's playing this is true. really <laughs> far away. You're, you're, you're you. right. <laughs> Suddenly he's Kobe Bryant. <laughs> uh, Five seconds left. Team Secret need to figure out what they're going to do, oh. and they're going to go with a bristle back. This has been the hero I like to pick against Alchemist. We said run at you, right? And this is the perfect hero to do it, force the issue. I, mean, I love that last pick from Secret. I'm going to go with their pace of the game being too fast for Alchemist. No, I mean, that's some some speedy gameplay. Some like TNC, you know, Gabby plays his, yeah. his bristle carry all the time, um, you know, taking stuff from some other people's ideas potentially. I mean, it's, um, it definitely looks like. I'm curious, I, I didn't see if Middle was playing the Tiny or the Winter Ranger. I wonder, was wondering if they switch it up, but I feel like they'll still put the Tiny mid. I think even with this Razor, you know, eventually he's going to go look, hit some neutral creeps with this ult, and you walk to his tower and you beat it down some. I think Secret has the tools to to play this game real fast. Yeah, and this Crystal Maiden is so value for her team. The Wind Ranger is going to be able to benefit so much from the roaming. Tiny, Bristleback obviously loves it all game. He may not even need to go for the Mana Region talent if you've got a Crystal Maiden on your team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, um, you yeah, know, they, they, they definitely have the tools to play this game fast, but on the other side of the, the oh, table. It is mid one tiny. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, this Alchemist hero is, is very difficult to play against. It's very high execution to uh, to beat it, so we'll see how, see how it goes. We can see, and we can also hear how well it'll go as we send it over to Casey talking to Team Secrets coach Sunbeam.
fantastic to see somebody in the interview, but you could also see RTK still in the box at the very end of that draft, still yelling orders down to the troops. Like, this is how we're going to get through this, guys. It's game two. We pull ourselves up. VG, they were one of the big favorites coming into this competition. It's been a rough run for them in this lower bracket. They haven't hit their stride, but this draft feels very comfortable for them, at least. Ori back on the Razor, Paparazzi into the Alchemist. Everything just feels good, at least as far as the draft goes. Prepare. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is clearly going to be an easier game for VG Gaming to execute. They are not playing against this core. If anything, the si it's kind of flipped. If you look at this game and what the panel said, Team Secret need to play fast. They need to put pressure so that Alchemist doesn't have a free game, which means that the burden of execution, in a way, is on Team Secret. If they play a slow game or if they fail executions in the early mid game, this Alchemist is going to become a monster. And he's not the only scaling hero on VG's side. They have three well scaling cores with Bloodlust. So you have to you have to pick up the pace. You have to push fast with your, uh, playing around your Bristleback. Um, do they, uh, do they actually have the sustain to do this? Like the panel was talking about, like the Crystal Maiden Nora giving you this, like, mm -hmm. like at least Nisha may be able to go for these early, more aggressive style or tankier style builds. Is there a timing that Team Seeker is looking for that will work against VG? I think you get Bristle's first core item, if possible, and then you do stuff. Uh, I'm still concerned, though. I feel much stronger uh, about VG Gaming's chances in this game. Just based on the fact that Secret have to do so much without really the ideal tools to do it. They have aggressive heroes that can take fights, but can you take those towers? Can you invade that enemy jungle when you have to run through a Razor and a Centaur and these two strong early fighting supports in the Ogre and the Grimstroke? Uh, it does seem pretty tough. DUI doing a lot of damage to Puppy here. Windrun has been skilled by Yap, so... Yeah, Puppy wants to... Uh... Oh, what do you actually want to do here? Because Windrun's skilled up. You don't have Frostbite. Puppy pretty keep being out of the lane. He's coming down towards the bottom. Yeah, I'm just like, hey, hey, we're all friendly around here. VG was actually planting LGD flags and throwing out LGD balloons on the bottom lane previously. Oh, Fade, this may be TP time. Just copying a little bit of the harassment, starting with Nasal Goo as the first ability for Nisha. The paparazzi will still be happy. He was able to skill up uh, Grievel's Greed. They got two of the bounty runes to begin with. Yep. And now Zai feels like he's going to get bullied a little bit out of this lane. But if someone's going to survive, it's going to be Zai. He's going to time it right against uh, DY's bloodlusted up Ogre. What wins there? Purification or Ogre? <laughs> Probably Ogre. <laughs> In the long run, at least. <laughs> Well, Zai does have made Nora. It will help him a lot. He doesn't oh have it yet. God. Oh my god. Zai club into the trees. Cut away. Club him. Club him. Uh, you, you got, there's more clubs to come. All right. Even got a creep wave to work with, but uh, <laughs> Yabs all... <laughs> I like how Yabs is like, oh, wait, I, I could do slow. I can give slow. This is how I can give, give support to Zai. Bottom lane. Uh, secret. I think this lane is probably the lane for them that is going to go the best. I would say Bristleback will have a pretty good time here, especially when Puppy hits level 2. So they get that aura up and running. Maybe Nisha's level 3. Centaur you can't really sustain very long against Quill Sprays. You have good health, but your armor is really bad. So Nisha will keep laying into him whenever he tries to go for CS. And as far as the mid lane goes, I don't know how this matchup goes. If I can be honest with you, I... Tiny versus Razor. You start yeah. link, then you toss him away as long as you have vision. Yeah, you have, like, he didn't even skill toss. He went two in tree grab and one in avalanche. And Tiny just has too much of a damage advantage in the early level. So Razor can't really win even when he starts static linking. Tiny is still better than him for, I think, two full seconds of the link. Now that link is level two, it's a different story. Now he might have to skill toss on level four. But mid one seems to be doing just fine for now. DY's keeping so much damage on this top lane. Zai, as well as Yabsar, just making this work under a double wave of Dire Creep. Zai, he just doesn't care. Paparazzi wants to farm up the wave as it's coming in, but DY, crazy purification. Yabsar, he's going to win run into the trees. Following after this Ogre, he's got a little bit of life to get through, but that will be enough. A quick Fire Blast, have to bait it out inside the tree line. Give some regeneration time for that Tango to go to work. And Yamsaw won't be able to find him, not for the moment at least. Big wave for Zai though. It's a double wave now, even three range creeps on him. He wants to pull all of this nice and easy back down to his tower. Paparazzi dragging He's the, not letting the, him. the radiant creep wave over. But it will of course push, so he will be getting all this experience soon enough. Uh, DY, be careful. 
At least for him, Yapsaw is not level two just yet. So that's it. That's the upside. No shackles to the trees, so DY can still be a little bit more aggressive. Bottom lane, Nisha. Pop stomp down from Yang. Faith working with it. Nisha, the cool spray for outside, but it wasn't high enough. Yang cross bitten up by Puppy. But he's still got a lot of regeneration, as well as that south to get back up to almost full. He's still a centaur. That was not the first blood I was expecting. I didn't think it would be on the bristleback. Of course, this lane from Vichy Gaming is really strong with Inkswell as well as the centaur. He must have had 13 stacks of Retaliate and just gone to work, and Nisha overestimated his tankiness. Hearing a oh. power shot up top, bit of harass. Actually watching Yang die on bottom lane, Grimstroke as well, caught out by the Frostbite, and then it's the blast. Yang came around with the Hulkstone trying to help out, the six charges will not give him the life they needed. And now it's two kills going the way of Team Secret. That looks more like the first blood I was expecting. <laughs> it feels like the Thompson lane. Hey, I got, uh, we killed in first blood, we're doing really great. Oh wait, hang on. Yeah, they got the return kills and now Bristleback is easily overtaking Centaur again by 300 gold. The hero to look for in the coming 10 minutes will definitely be the guy we've talked about the least mid one. He has to he has to start invading relatively early on when he gets levels. Uh, similar to what we saw done against Seek, um, against EG by Topson's Tiny. Uh, I think there was just a male Tiny yesterday that also tried to aggro against Alchemist and try to find him in the jungle. Oh, I think Fate's dead again. Oh, no, Yang's gonna turn around. They're gonna start with Inkswell. And Puppy keeping on the back of Fade. He had the double damage and you'll need his damage to this or will you? Yang. Has he got oh, the damage? Yeah, but we frost bitten down again. Fade's coming into hell. Oh, the double! Man, if this was the old order with that counter to start, it would have been great, but Yang still kills Nisha. The trade-off will be instantly back, however. Nisha gave him the chance. If he keeps his distance there and just plays Quill Spray, I think that's not even close to being a trade, but uh, nice Yang fade. Using the ink swell. Comes in, actually kills the cures. We're running Queen of Pain Star Razor now. But uh, the trade off again will be a support. Nisha will silence up for the moment. Fade try and duke it around the tree lines, but Nisha's quills, they don't care. Seven one charges, however. This will make it a little bit more difficult. Fade is going to trigger him, and with the slow, maybe they get a little bit more. Zai trying to TP out of the top lane after finding the kill on Paparazzi under the tier one tower. Yeah, already TP top as well. And he came in too late. That's a really big kill killing off this alchemist that's exactly what you want to see for secret in this game and that it's the hero to shut mid. down yeah tiny gets space in mid it's looking so far so good for, for team secret in this game it it is there is a lot of burden of execution on them but they've been delivering it so far and now i guess paparazzi after being killed off in the safe lane it's probably going to be like screw it i'm going jungle they're going to start protecting him with the wards maybe pulling up an extra support to try to help out if needed yeah best thing about the alchemist you can always recover especially when someone gives you mud golem camps yep thanks yep. gabe for that <laughs> that's uh that's some easy money so dy will have to do the defense on the top lane but yamsor and zai they really are just a killer combination not even just as heroes just as players the way they sync together in the off lane That moment when a three position's actually happy to give the, the four the same type of importance in the lane. And Every yeah. app store game ever. Isha. That's a little deep. Coming between the towers, but he knows there's pressure being applied up on top lane. Aparazzi's farming underneath the tower, but Ori won't come and join this. This is really good play from Nisha. Uh, he's, he knows his limits here, and he goes in and forces Centaur away. And that's going to be three quarters of the wave gone from Yang. He didn't get the experience because Nisha just dives that far and zones him off effectively. And now that the Siege Creep is coming in from the pull, Nisha will try to protect his Siege Creep as well. Yang doing a good job here with one illusion at a time to try to hold the lane in a good position for himself. And now he's going to go and grab the experience, but the Siege Creep is still alive for a bit. This is that early pressure. Anna was talking about it. Bristleback had to be the enabler for it. VG will fortify for the moment. Nisha still taking up the tower. The catapult stays alive at 155. Yang would like to have some help. And I've just been watching Ari for the last three minutes. He's rotated to the top lane twice. He's actually gone top, mid, top, now all the way down to bottom lane. They have to make this work with the movement. Moreover, Static Link's just about to come off cooldown. Hawkstomp's out. There's a lot of cool spray stacks up, but it won't matter. 
Yang is able to bring down Nisha. But what's the cost? Yamsor is contesting Paparazzi inside the jungle. Puppy is actually farming up another one of the stacks. And Zai is diving under the T1 tower on top lane. And with the TP being stopped, now Zai probably believes he can kill off DY. In fact, yeah, he'll just keep toss running him. around the tower. He wants to toss, but lost vision. Got far enough away. And now the ward is being pinged out by Ori. He's like, wait a minute. If they're moving like this, uh -huh. trying to get that toss, they definitely see you here. Yapsaw can do the scouting. Greatest thing about Windrun. And Puppy, I still love this. He's got his observer ward down. He's farming on the other side of the trees. Oh, Ori's the not shot. looking at this. Did the power shot see fade? He got hit by it, but it was on the edge. Not sure if they saw him with the vision. There's a ping that's coming out now. It's like, okay, guys, maybe we should be looking for something around here. Puppy, oh, under Mist two of Dirt Wars, though. is going to TP himself out. DY won't see him. And the sentry is in range of one of those ops. It's so clear what the game plan is. It's like, you can just look at the minimap and identify it as an alchemist game almost. It's eight minutes in. Both teams had like three or four heroes in the dire jungle up here. And good play from Secret again. They managed to grab that tower. They got in one aggressive ward that did not get dewarded and one that did. And this one that did and could provide a big kill. Zai is coming to contest it. DY is nearby. Curry is going to bring extra supplies over. With this aggressive move, maybe they think of something else. Inkswell out here from Fade, looking to get both of them. He'll only end up catching out Zai as Ori stealing huge amounts of damage from this Omni Knight. Have they got enough to finish him off with the slow from Fade? The stroke of Fade doing its work, but the trade off is the mid tower. Puppy and mid one are beating into this, and Centaur's got no other choice but to TP to here. But as he does that, you know where Nish is headed. Tier one tower on bottom lane. We're threatening the VG gaming real estate. This is. Honestly, I'm really impressed with how Secret are playing this. And it's just flat out strategically. It's not about like amazing spell casting or huge outplays. They just have a super good understanding of what it is they need to do in the game right now. How they allocate resources, who plays where, what the goal is. And exactly like you said, they just keep pressuring everywhere. They know that Vichy Gaming are running, kind of running from lane to lane and they're losing farm on it and they're still losing their towers. Nisha gets the bottom tower. Mid tower is almost gone, taken by mid one very soon. With this tree, he's probably gonna head straight over there to combine with Zai. Even smoking a puppy to oh actually never mind, that's an invis rune. Yep, Secret are in a great spot in this game. I did not think they were gonna build this big of an advantage this early on, but it's what they needed to do. Puppy's gone rogue. The courier is gonna fly right over the top of him. They kind of know where everyone's farming because you've still got the observer ward up. This never got dewatered by VG gaming. And they're doing everything they can, VG, to keep this tier one tower alive in mid. Nisha comes around the back. They'll go for the silent stampede forward. Where's the ink swell? Where's the fall up? Zyme wants to get the purification, but then again, the hook stop from Yang. They get the double. They're bound together. The soul line. Ori, so much damage coming into him. He needs to pump it into Nisha, but then these cool spray stacks up to seven. Ori, he may not even have the life of course. They actually just blow up the razor, and DY can't do anything else here. Yapsaw will get a double kill because, hey, it's him. As VG Gaming. They continue to lose more and more of this map, and every time they try an answer, they get a dial error. Yeah, trying to kill the bristle there turns out to be a big mistake. They thought they had the damage, they did not. Oh, the toss. Perfect, blink dagger out from mid one, making it work, able to toss the tree as well. And Paparazzi and Yang are there, but what are they gonna do? There's not a single point up in concoction. This is a full farming alchemist. There's no real control. Centaur cannot blink forward. Yep, he has to retreat to the jungle again and just keep farming. And this will be a very late Radiance. We've seen Radiance is done at this time, and he still has 2,000 gold to go, even more, 2,500. Oh, see here, they get a really good static link on the Bristleback, and they're gonna kill off the Omni Knight. What happens now is what loses the fight. Ori keeps hitting the Bristleback in the back. They Fire Blast him here, that procs another Quill Spray. Because he gets the multicast, the multicast might have actually killed Ori. And it's just too easy, Nisha with this Vanguard, and the... Heavenly Grace, you don't go on this Bristleback. You drain him, sure, that's great. But you have to go on the other heroes, so your damage just isn't there yet. Yep. And even, with even when he stops, like mid one saw him actually try and back off into the tree lines, but that one attack gave vision. He tossed uh, one creep, and uh, that actually looked to be the thing that got the kill. And what a secret, too. Here we go again. Blink, Avalanche, toss, and Ogre for all the life he has. They still have enough burst damage. Yep, saw from a long range. He has Finds that one on Wind Ranger. Oh my god, this is a this is meant to be support. Yeah, that's got a more, really good time. He is, he is 200 net worth above the Centaur. And Secret just keep ramping up the pressure. 
this mid tower, I don't, I don't think Vichy can fight. They just can't deal with this Bristleback right now. Paparazzi needs more time. He's at 3.4k gold. Can't even buy the relic yet. Not a single tower lost by Team Secret. The map is closing very quickly. And there's more and more observable as Secret's getting down. I'm loving this one right next to Fade, almost next to the Dire base. It's in so deep, and uh, you got Fade there with one sentry wall. It's like, well, where do I put this? Bristol's taking the stacks on the bottom. Paparazzi at least has moved north. He can buy the relic. The courier's coming out for that now. It's just so late. He has yep. lower net worth than the Bristol minute 14 while maxing out Greville's Greed. The early aggressive moves for Secret. I can't state enough how important these first 10 minutes are in this game. They've got everything they wanted. And now it's just about keep playing aggressively. Keep controlling the map. You are much stronger than the opponent oh, right now. Don't the give them space. Mid one's here. The mid one's here. He can't even get the bloody relic into, into the alchemist. Well, at least he didn't buy it. That, that's true. That would have been even worse. But in order to actually buy the full radiance now, he has to walk over to the shop and then walk home. That's so much wasted time. And VG, they can't even protect him to walk to that shop. Zai, Ari, trying to get something out of him right now. Starts with a static link. Poppy's nearby. Can cross by. In fact, he's just going to Nova. Yang, and he really kind of wants to stampede for something here, but he knows he needs it for defense. Too much of secret nearby. There's just no jungle that's safe. A smoke up from VG Gaming. They're heading north. They are heading for mid one. Or they're either heading to debate with the Alchemist. This is how you get him his Radiance. They want to get Bounty Runes. Well, mid one's going to be there. Paparazzi, Avalanche, mid one creates the space. He's going to blink away. They won't get any Bounty Runes. They all belong to Secret. But yeah, it is how you get the, that's how you get the Radiance. Dyer's bottom tower. The full cavalry riding out and backing off. He got, he's he got, got the it. money for the Radiance, but uh, the Courier is dead for over a minute and a half. Uh, so, BT home. It's the only option he had. This should be the last tower. Mid lane, Ari, well. very well caught out. Mid one is going to toss him back into the freezing field of Pumpy. Stampede being used. Gapsol stops him for half second with the shackle. Ari, he still needs more movement speed. Has the TP scroll. Can he get away with the Panther field? No, he can't. Mid one has a blink. Optimistic TP to say the least. And he's dead for half a minute. Just as VG Gaming were hoping Ori could make more space so Paparazzi can start playing catch up with this Radiance farm. But look at Nisha. He's at the tier three tower. They're looking, they're looking just to go up. First game ended pretty quickly. This game is headed the same current direction. VG Gaming cannot match the tempo of Team Secret. The salt bind from Fade, Nisha, staying away from the rest of his teammates. They take the tier 3 tower at the 16 minute mark. And now the shackle won't be able to land for the power shot. Yang, four quill spray stacks are up. Nisha at least put the phantom brace on him, so he's silenced up for the moment. They need a stun. Concoction is beginning. It's a good static link. They need to keep him controlled, however. Now I'll be finally throwing out. The catapult fortified up. Man, they're keeping this up. They don't have the creep wave. They needed a fortify to keep this push going. Nisha turns his back and says, please try it. I dare you. I double dare you. All right. You want to fight Ori? Four cool spray, five cool spray stacks up. The battle's still going in mid one. Avalanche toss. Ori can't be here. He needs to move away from Nisha. Power shot from Yamso. Kill secures it up. Yang, now he's in trouble. Everyone's just being stacked. Everyone looks like a porcupine. They try to run back to base. Yang so low. The tree toss won't ever get the kill. It's Nisha who's able to reach it with the cool spray stacks. And the bottom lane of ranks. We're 17 minutes into this game and it's going down. We were talking about how this game was going to be better for Vichy Gaming than the first one. It's getting worse. They're getting absolutely crushed by Secret. This is around the time in the last game when IO started to really come online. But this time they've already lost the barracks. They're just getting completely outplayed and out strategized in the series so far. And at, that, at this point, all you can really hope for is keep farming up paparazzi, hope that the secret lineup overextends because you're not killing the Bristleback if no. he plays normally with Heavenly Grace on him and the Hood and the Vanguard and almost a Solar Crest. It's just way too big. Just, just 
Bristol, no? Look at the damage output. 13.5k physical from the Bristol. And there is nothing near from VG Gaming. The best you get is Razor. And time and time again, Ori, he just knows he can't stand in these fights. He's trying to build into the BKB to have some level of sustain, but we're going again. Who cares about Roshan? We don't need it. VG Gaming, they're walking still underneath this full duration Observer Ward. The mid one will capitalize on a double avalanche up. The shackle connects them as well. It throws DY and Thunderansi. No way out. Yang also has to stampede. He's in front of his tier three tower and he has to commit this. The creep wave is gone. Ori has to come back at some point. He's trying to take this tier one tower so he at least has some level of money so they can get close to this BKB. Paparazzi will hold them for the moment. For Team Secret, they'll take a second lane of Rax. 19 minutes in as VG Gaming still have no answer to Team Secret. Hoof stop all you want, but the longer you stand here, the more powerful Nisha becomes. They need the creep wave. Maybe they don't. That's plus 186 damage that came up on Nisha there for a second. And DY's like, maybe I should stun this. Maybe I should ignite this. Oh, what do you do? Who are you going to go on? Omni Knight is standing behind them with an Aether Lens and a Medallion. Just protecting heroes. Nisha is... Ari, uh, needs, hello? <laughs> Ari, Ari needs 300 gold for his BKB. They're trying to buy some time. At least they're getting rid of the creep waste VG Gaming. And then TP, bottom lane. You know that 300 gold, 200 gold you're away? Yamso hits the shackle with the focus fire. Team Secret move around and down goes Ori. And Pepperazzi, what do I do? To the jungle! To the jungle! There's farm to be had! Yeah, he's trying to get a BKB. I don't actually know if that's the right choice. I think they need damage. I think he has to rush AC in this game. Smart from DY. Just TP out. Get away. Paparazzi's gonna get both of the runes up on top. So that's a little bit of a saving grace. 3.8k now in his bank account. He's 200 away from having that BKB, but Nisha, he ain't letting up. That's a double damage rune on the bristle back. Plus 288. Nisha is just going to town. No one can stop him. So first BKB will arrive. Paparazzi got forced to ulti by mid one. Second BKB's up as well. They're gonna have to fight anyway. Paparazzi, concoction, is preparing. Nisha has the protection of the Heavenly Grace. Here comes your soul fight, but where's the stun? Paparazzi. He stunned himself. Well, that's not the plan. That's a soul bind down. Oh boy, Nisha's back up again. Double damage rune is about to wear it off, but the tier three towers are already gone. You'll get your stun out, but Nisha quickly recovers. And again, the frontliner. Ori can steal some of the damage. Yep, so looking for a good shackle. Almost got Yang and Ori together. Nisha, you took 47. Don't worry, he's got more where that came from. Into Yang, a quick hop stomp, creates some more space. Still no static link. Yang, get the hell out of there. He had the ink swell from Fade. He thought he could actually stun over towards Nisha. But Team Secret has won. They push in to the top lane of Rax to try and claim the Magus mid one. He's already got the Aghanim Scepter. The volley begins. And then you even get... Oh my god. Side saving everyone. Everyone's GA'd up. Paparazzi, he wants something. He's looking for the damage out, but he can't see him. The Glimmer can't protect him at the moment. Zai will finally go down. But there's two dead from VG Gaming. Yamsel, no one life as well. The Radiance Burst is finally doing some work. But remember Nisha, he was back at the fountain. Then Puppy and Mid-1 combo together. GG, it's done already. An for kill for Mid-1 will knock VG Gaming out of the international. One of the favorites coming into this event. And they just got spanked. I think that's the biggest stomp of the main event. These games were 20 minutes. Yeah. They were both 20 minutes. Secret just completely, they came in with a plan. We were a bit worried when they gave away the alchemy.